I found today's entry difficult to classify at first. I'd seen things saying it was a visual novel, but that didn't feel like it fit to me. There are elements where you are clicking through dialogue. There is a defined tale it wants to tell. And yeah, I guess it is, but most of the game involves erasing and later writing in a diary. So it didn't feel like it fit. However, like I say, I've come round on that. So let's talk about the visual novel, If Found by Dreamfield. And this is one that hits fairly close to home. But it isn't one that I sought out, even though the subject matter is appealing to me. Like many, if not all, of the visual novels I've talked about on this channel, it was part of a bundle. In fact, May 2022's Humble Choice Bundle. So the one that's live now as of this video going out. So if this interests you, go and get it. That's what I'm saying. But I've been a member for a while, so I have all choices available to me. I'm not sure if that's the model now. I can't remember. If it is, fine. But if I've got all the choices and none of them are drastically uh, unappealing to me, I will choose all of them and give them a good shot. So I booted this up not really expecting much. And even though it's a different way of doing things, I liked how it brought them in and I appreciate what they do for the story. But the space bits didn't appeal as much as the rest of it. That might be because I've never been an astronaut near a black hole. But the core story, and the reason I wanted to talk about it, is the story of Cassio. Cassio Pier, in full. A young lass in 1993 Ireland, towards the end of the year, Christmas and New Year. However, she wasn't always a lass, and this causes a lot of issues. Her mom, her brother, just don't understand. They don't get it. It just doesn't make sense to them. They think it's a phase, even though she's 23. They don't think that it's normal. They think it's something that can be hidden. There are letters later on that say this. And this kind of lack of understanding is not just right for Ireland at that time, but much, if not all, of the world. It's very easy to forget now where we've got a lot more tolerance. And yes, we still have a long way to go. But we have a lot more tolerance. We have notable public figures who are fully trans or non-binary or whatever. And I say fully trans just to delineate between that. I'm not saying non-binary is lesser. Why would I say that? But just to delineate. So we have this awareness. We have this understanding. We have this acceptance. But like I say, still a long road ahead. But 1993 was nothing like this. It was very hard to just get on with life without people going, can't you just be normal? Can't you conform? Settle down with a nice member of the opposite sex to your birth sex that isn't what you feel, etc.? And yeah, it's not great. It's a very difficult thing. So that's the bit that, like I say, really spoke to me. But through disagreement, she ends up leaving, shacks up with a gay couple and this extra person who doesn't quite know who they are yet. Um, in this cold, rundown place. It's a squat. It's a very squalid place. It's falling apart. The roof caves in. It's very cold because it's again towards the end of the year. And she falls out with them because one of them makes an advance on her. She doesn't reciprocate because she's still, I've got to figure out me. I think this is the right way to go, but I don't know outside of that. I don't know whether I like girls, boys, whatever. I am very much unsure. And there are repeated attempts to try and get her to come home. But under the proviso that she hides who she is. And this is the thing that I started getting the feels. I was like, oh. That hits. That really hits in many ways. I'm not going to go into detail here, but I've had those discussions with people who, in my opinion, should know better in some cases. And it's hard. It's difficult. It's a very difficult thing to shoulder. But it means that, you know, she just ends up staying in the place. I mean, there is a window, if you will, a sort of oasis, this lovely old woman who may be a closeted lesbian from what I glean it's it's not said outright, but there's enough hinting there that if you know code and if you understand the mindset that people of that generation had to be, because it wasn't even legal for a long while, remember. A good guy who sadly passed away a few years ago was of the generation where he had to speak in code. And even when speaking to me once I knew, he even used coded language because it's just intrinsic. 
so maybe like i say this wonderful old woman was that that was a little a little nod to that older generation kind of issue but yeah things don't work out she ends up running away back to this place and is on the verge of death and the two plots then start to interweave this story of a, an anomaly which apparently centered on earth and this astronaut has to meet an accountant who helps right that wrong that to me like i say it didn't appeal in the same way i get what it was going for i understand but i felt it could have worked without it but we have the moment at the end where death is literally looming right behind cassio's shoulder she's in this squat it's cold it's damp there's mold growing everywhere she's classifying new types of it unfortunately she doesn't want to light a fire. She doesn't want to do anything to keep warm because she's worried that the police or family or whoever will see she's in there. They even knock the door and she hides in a corner away. She's become so terrified of dealing with people that her own survival takes second place, if, if that. It's probably even further back behind other stuff. So she risks her life. But it does, apparently, and I'll get to that in a second, have a happy ending. She is found. She is brought out. I mean, she started burning the diary. This is, I think, the symbolism of us erasing it. It's as it's burned to try and keep warm. And she realizes, I do need a fire. I need to do something here. But she's rescued. She's well. And she is welcomed back into the family with open arms. She is loved again, and the bit that really brought me to tears was when her mum's hugging her, saying, I've got you, everything's okay, your mum's here, I've got you, Cassio. Recognising her name, recognising that she exists. An earlier letter says, you know, to my son, but now... It's realisation that I don't have a son. And that's fine. That's a good thing. Well, she does have sons, obviously, but she doesn't have this child as a son. This is her daughter. And there's a wonderful shot of everyone together in a kitchen, drinking and everything like that. And as you colour over, it becomes more coloured full each time. But this is a thing that I said maybe it isn't as happy. I don't know if this is because of the 12 Days of Christine I did a while back. It's too perfect, that last scene. Everyone sat together. Even Shans is there, the, the one who you know, made advances and it all went a bit wrong. Everyone's in that kitchen there. Now, it could be because of, you know, they were contacted and everything's like, oh, you know, we need to make sure that she's okay. It could be that. However, I wonder if this whole ending and the whole thing with... Cassiopeia the doctor I wonder if that whole thing was a fever dream of her dying mind that's a very bleak way to look at it but I can't ignore that niggling thing in my head but I'm making a choice to accept the happy end because we go through the rigmarole of setting up a new diary there are new lines that come up and this is where like some of the actual choices are made we get to choose how the narrative is written out but at the end, we get to design Cassio. We get to cement a look. Because everyone else has a defined look, but she's very nebulous. Hair's just there. No real defined facial features or anything like that. But we get to choose the eyes. We get to choose the hair. We get to choose what she's wearing. Any accessories. We get to choose a backdrop. And of course, I chose the trans flag. Duh. And then we get to say, this diary belongs to. Now... I'm sure the developers designed it to, so that we could write our name. But this isn't mine. I wrote Cassio. I wrote Cassio. I did it in a flancy way, because why not? But I wrote Cassio in that. This was, at times, a very harrowing thing, a very heart-wrenching, very heartbreaking thing to experience. 1993 Ireland was not a good place for anyone who wasn't heteronormative, and cisgendered it's very simple and like i say the rest of the world's been the same for a long while too and we are still learning we are still improving in that respect but if you've ever lived through any of these struggles whether it was at that time or not play this if you know someone 
who is struggling with their gender identity or whatever, play this. If you've never even really thought about gender identities and sexuality, play this. I haven't ruined it by telling you what happens. It's still something that the experience, if you have a soul, will touch you. It will impact you. And let me know how you designed Cassio. There's a little call to action in the comments. Let me know what you dressed her up as. I just did it fairly straightforward. I just did what worked and what looked nice to me. And like I say, big trans flag in the background. But yeah, dream feel. I want to see even more. But that's all I'm going to say on this. So thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, as always, take care.